How far away is space? Well, that seems like a simple question. It's not that the atmosphere just stops suddenly at some point. Really, there is no exact correct answer. It mostly just comes down to convention. Generally, space is considered to be where orbital forces are more important than aerodynamic ones. In the 1900s, Theodore von Kármán determined the line to be about 80 kilometers above sea level. However, the Kármán line now sits at about 100 kilometers above sea level, which is the more internationally used standard. However, American organizations still tend to use the 80 kilometer line, except NASA a mission control which uses 122 kilometers because that's where drag is still noticeable. If we went down the no atmosphere route we'd be looking at about a thousand kilometers. But if we use that then the International Space Station wouldn't even be close to being in space. So I know, Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos got to about 86 and 107 kilometers respectively in their billionaire dick measuring contest. But why can it be important to define what space is? Well because stuff that happens in space tends to come under international conventions. The country's airspace however people get a bit defensive about out. So why am I looking at this? Ah! Right, it's mechanics time. So we're going to look at this as Hulk throwing a boulder into space. First, let's do a basic. How fast would something have to go to travel 100 kilometers against gravity? Using acceleration due to gravity of minus 9.81 meters per second squared, its initial speed would have to be about 1400 meters per second. But for multiple reasons, this would be a massive underestimate. Firstly, this assumes it's being thrown directly upwards. And once you take into account the horizontal component of the movement, it would actually be moving much faster. Assuming the rock's thrown at about a 60 degree angle, that would give us a speed of close to 1600 meters per second. That calculation also assumed that the rock just stopped at the Kármán line rather than going into space. Gravity also technically changes as you move away from the Earth's surface. At 100 kilometers up, gravitational acceleration actually is reduced by about 4%. There would also technically be some lift force acting on the boulder, but it would be negligible really. The biggest omission from that calculation though would be that it's not including anything to do with air resistance or drag. Drag is the force that air applies to an object as something moves through it. As an object moves through the air, it smashes into the air particles and moves them out of the way. But then the air particles act back on the object, slowing it down. This would mean the deceleration of the boulder would actually be greater. The drag force acting on a moving object is dependent on four things. The density of the fluid the object is moving through, the speed the object is moving at, the surface area that's pushing through the fluid, and a value called the drag coefficient that's dependent on the shape of the object. More aerodynamic objects have a smaller drag coefficient. The density of air depends on things like altitude and temperature, but for this we'll use 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed. For the surface area we use a very rough estimate of 4 meters squared. There are some studies looking at the drag coefficient of debris which suggest we use a value of about 0.86. Using these values and the speed of 1600 meters per second, the drag force would be about 5.4 million newtons, or about 57 times the gravitational force acting on it. So we have a nice simple solution now? Well, as the drag force acts on it, it slows it down, which then reduces the drag force, which slows it down by less and so on. So of course it's not a nice simple solution. Trying to apply drag and gravity simultaneously gives horrendous equations. So I'm going to go down a different route. Escape velocity. The speed an object needs to move to escape gravitational forces without any need to accelerate any further. Basically, it's the speed you need to go to leave Earth's gravity. Escape velocity is calculated using the gravitational constant g, the mass of the body that the object is escaping from, in this case Earth, and the distance to the center of that body. Using this equation, we get an escape velocity of 11.2 kilometers per second for Earth. This does, however, still exclude air resistance, but it's much closer to the correct value. The equation is derived by finding the point where the object's kinetic energy is equal to its gravitational potential energy. For a black hole, the escape velocity is greater than the speed of light, hence why nothing can escape a black hole. But if Bruce is throwing that boulder into space, it's going at least 11.2 kilometers per second. Let's take that 11.2 kilometers per second and say that's the vertical speed, and say it's being thrown at a 60 degree angle. Looking at the footage, Hulk accelerates that boulder in about 0.133 seconds. This means the acceleration of the boulder is about 97,000 meters per second squared, which requires an approximate force of 933 mega newtons. That force is the same is holding up a mass of 95.2 million kilograms. To put that mass into perspective, it's about the same as nine and a half Eiffel Towers or 15,000 elephants. Compare that to the time he stopped the Chitauri Leviathan in the first Avengers film. If you use the three million ton mass estimate given by Zach Penn, one of the screenwriters, you get a force on the scale of giga newtons, or about 10 times the force of our boulder throw. Problem is, that mass was a wild guess, and looking any deeper into it from a physical standpoint, it makes zero sense. In reality, the Leviathan was much smaller than that. 
on the scale of hundreds or thousands of tons. But in reality, though it looks routine for the Hulk, the fact that throwing that boulder was so easy for him might make it one of his greatest feats in the MCU. Basically, it comes down to not the fact that the boulder was moving so fast or that it was so heavy, it's that he was able to accelerate it so quickly. 